Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Thomas Loninger. Thomas is the executive director of the NGO Epicenter Works and the vice president of the board of EDRI, the European Digital Rights Organization. Thomas was one of the driving forces behind the Save the Internet campaign during the previous EU discussions around net neutrality, a topic he still focuses on, as well as data protection and mass surveillance. He also writes on netspolitik.org, is a regular guest in their podcast, and is a non-residential fellow of the Center for Internet and Society at the Stanford Law School. Okay, Thomas, you know about our three plus one format. You get three questions and one so box moment at the end. So let me start by putting the first question on screen and reading out loud. How do you interpret the relationship between users accessing more content and services online and the impact this may have on telecoms operators? Actually, a quite simple question. I mean, the content that we see online is the reason why people buy internet access. It's not as if the networks of telecom operators are so great on themselves. It's the richness of the global content that is accessible through the internet that creates demands for internet access. That was also acknowledged by Commissioner Lili Cruz. Um, at the end of her term, she also said, this is actually the virtuous circle that drives the internet economy and the relationship between the providers of contents, applications and services and the providers of internet access are actually a mutually beneficial one and should not be seen as being in conflict with each other. So basically, a uh, virtual circle, uh, no one buys a pipe for the sake of a pipe, uh, no one can access content and services without that pipe. So symbiotic relationship between uh, those two parts of the value chain. Let me then switch to the second question, which is, what are the inherent dangers, if any, of big tech being requested to pay for the network of telecom operators. First, it's important to stretch that everybody who has access to the internet already pays for that access. Um, so there is no free riding. Everybody who is either uh, using or offering a service has to pay for that. How much they pay depends on the offers of the telecom operators. Mm -hmm. Um, but the net neutrality protections that we have in Europe give everybody with an internet subscription the right to offer and use services of their choosing. Um, the one thing that we're now discussing, the Aetna proposal, which we discussed 10 years ago, ascending party pays, would essentially mean shifting this business model of the internet. Telecom operators want to get paid twice. They not only want to get money from their own subscribers, but also want to get money from the services that their subscribers are accessing. Um, so basically a double-sided market where they get paid for doing one thing, just double. And the reason why this is such a problem is we know how this business model will work. It is the way the telephony networks have worked. There we had a system called calling party network pays. So when I call you, my mobile operator has to pay your mobile operator for terminating this call. That is inherently anti-competitive because it favors the biggest market participants. It would really give the telecom operators uh, the luxury of making money by basically just sitting on their hands. And there's good reasons why we chose a different business model for the open internet. And let us be clear, we are talking about what binds the internet together what makes a global network of networks the internet and e experiments with that, with the fundamentals, how this has worked for the past decades are very dangerous and should not be done lightly, uh, in particular, as we see right now, without any public consultation, any listening to regulators, any due diligence, that would just be really dangerous. Thank you, Thomas. So basically, this is not when we're talking about this sending party pays um, uh, model that is proposed or a new iteration of that model that is being proposed by Edno, we're looking at the past, at the telecoms networks, and this is not a big telco versus big tech issue. This is an internet issue, which, which uh, affects the fundamentals of how the internet was, was built and put together. Um, 
Let me switch to the third question then, which is a bit more anecdotal, but I think still still interesting knowing all the numbers that are flying around at the moment. Um, do you think it is appropriate to compare the contribution of big tech and of telecom operators in infrastructure as suggested by some? I think the comparison that needs to be drawn is with the ancillary copyright for press publishers that we discussed in the copyright directive from 2015 till 2019. And it's the same flawed idea that is based on a misunderstanding of the open internet. Um, back then, we didn't understand how links work. Now we don't understand that data that's sent to European networks is requested by paying internet customers, people in Europe that are already paying to use that service. So and if we now want to introduce particular payment obligations, maybe termination fees or price regulation in Interconnect, then what we are actually doing is um, removing the one thing that keeps the market working. We see huge interconnection disputes in the networks today, but those are all between the smaller market participants and the big ISPs. So the big ISPs are the ones that are already extorting money, in effect doing paid prioritization, because if you are not paying Deutsche Telekom, you will have very poor service quality in their network. And there is no way around that. That is a fact that has happened for many years in Europe. And I think we need to take this opportunity of the fair share debate to talk more about it. And we need to seriously have, ask regulators, have an honest discussion about regulatory intervention. I think paid prioritization is already prohibited in the open internet regulation we have in Europe. We just need to apply it for interconnection, which Barrack has acknowledged in its current net neutrality guidelines, mm -hmm. that they can do that, they should do it in order to solve that problem. Having big tech pay is a different story. We do have this debate because of two reasons. First, those companies are far too big and second, they don't pay taxes. That needs to be solved. As long as we don't solve that problem, we'll end up in similar debates like ancillary copyright or the fair share debate. We really need to look at the historical record. What we are doing right now in Europe is cementing the market position of these big tech companies. When we make them pay, they will be the only ones that can pay. And they will be the only ones that have the service quality that distinguishes them from all of their competitors, which is the worst thing that Europe could do. And so I really think this is a single market issue that uh, we need to thoroughly understand and then very much back away from uh, the ethno ideas. Also because there are now so many stakeholders who have raised their concerns that it would simply be um, a very captured European Commission if they would go along with that idea. So basically, um, and, and I'm taking back your point from the previous question also, there, there needs to be evidence-based uh, policy making with proper consultation and looking into the issues at stake. And you identify issues, but they're maybe not in the place that Etno is pointing at <laughs> in terms of market forces and, and, and abuses. Um, and also um, looking at um, not doing the same mistakes as done in, in recent legislative dossiers, which is creating a regime whereby barriers to entry for the smaller ones become so high that we're consolidating big tech instead of trying to curb their market dominance. Uh, and finally, not an internet tax, but taxes. <laughs> not a copyright tax, but taxes. Uh, just uh, apply normal taxes and make sure that they are then spent uh, for public interest purposes uh, in, in the right way, whatever those public interests may be. Um, we're coming to the end of this podcast, which is um, that wonderful moment where you can, um, I'll, I'll use the term that Edno likes, free ride, uh, but here it's in terms of freedom of speech um, and uh, the soapbox moment. Um, Ursula von der Leyen, President of the European Commission, just appeared on screen. Roberta Metzola, uh, President of the European Parliament. The st two strong women in Brussels, and you have one to two minutes to share your wisdom, I think, from, from what's been done in the past and encourage them to do the right thing in the future. If we take um, a note from the person who has invented the concept of net neutrality, Tim Wu, he once said, selling of net neutrality 
uh, or giving away net neutrality to afford a better network is like selling off a painting in order to be able to afford a better frame. Um, and I think we are truly giving up what makes the internet special, valuable to society, such a driving force in our economy, in our education, and so forth. Um, the variable cost for data volume and interconnection are almost zero. That's why there are many times no written agreements. We are regulating the wrong thing here, and it uh, takes attention away from the real problem. Um, you cannot get the ideas of the old telephony area put onto the internet without abolishing net neutrality. And um, that has one historical precedent. If European politicians don't want to follow the example of Donald Trump in abolishing net neutrality, then I truly think that we need to rethink this whole debate and hopefully come back to a more factual discussion about the real problems on the open internet. That was a strong comparison, Thomas. <laughs> One I'm sure that uh, both ladies will not find very appealing um, in terms of uh, Mr. Trump. Uh, but um, yes, let's hope that Brussels moving forward uh, takes the time and decides to choose for the painting, not the frame. Uh, and uh, to allow the continued innovation coming from the internet to stream and to let users choose what they access and how they access it. Thank you so much for your time, Thomas.